I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Amen. Now, when God talks about how compassionate he is, and I'm going to read that one verse from Psalms 111, verse 4. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. I'm going to look up the word compassion because I want you to get what he's really saying. I really do. And the reason I want you to get it is because some of you don't really understand where God is coming from. Compassion, sympathy, empathy. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Help me, Lord. Fellow feeling care, concern, mm. sensitivity, warmth, love, tenderness, mercy. These are all the synonyms. Mm. Leniency, tolerance, kindness, charity. I'm just basically dealing with the punch words that really grab who God is. Now, for those of you who don't know what empathy is. I'm, I'm dissecting this, so bear with me on this. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. Now, when you deal with who God is, put this up here. When you deal with who God is, He's not just the ruler over the universe waiting for you to blow it so he can boot you out in 86 you're behind. No. When God created you and me, he knew our makeup. He knew what our idiosyncrasies would be, what our strengths would be what our weaknesses would be. He also knew ahead of time what our scars would be made up of and how they would affect us. Now, once you understand how understanding God really, really is, you would never dare give up on yourself. And you would never dare be afraid or intimidated by someone else. God not only has you in his control, in his sights, he also knows every little scheme and scam the enemy is trying to pull on you. He knows the areas where you justify your weaknesses and where you rationalize and, 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 and coddle 
your sins and your weaknesses. He knows that too. But he also knows why. Oh boy, I wish you could get the love of God. Hmm. Now, let me go back to the word because I want you to hear this. Now, when God talks about how much, how mindful he is of his covenant. Even though we break our covenant, we break covenant all the time because that is our human nature. Not that we should excuse that, but we do. Even when we're doing our very, very, very best, we still screw up, don't we? But God never, ever breaks covenant. Never. Oh, God, help me keep my emotions under control. See, when I talk about God, I'm talking from experience, not from a letter edition. When I say letter edition, not from black and white on paper. I'm talking not academically, but experientially. I know this by seeing what God has done in my life. So when I start talking about the attributes of God, I get emotional because then the worship starts bubbling up inside of me. So understand that and you understand why I get so emotional when I talk about how God is towards us. Okay, let me take a breath. Okay, the works of his hands are verity and judgment. God is so full of truth. He even said in Psalms, I desire, I require truth on the inward part. Because God is nothing but truth. I mean, he is love, he is truth, he's all powerful. And we are so used to people in our lives. Renigi reneging on promises, reneging on commitments, reneging on responsibility, being unreliable, uh, flaking out, all of that. It makes it very difficult to really, really trust God. Okay. Oh, help me, God. Help me with this. Okay, now. He sent redemption through his son, Jesus Christ. We know that. But when he commanded his covenant, he commanded it forever. Now, one of the things, sometimes the fear we have of God is misplaced. We do need to fear God because that is the beginning of wisdom. However, here's the problem. We don't fear him the way he wants us to fear him, in reverence, in awe. No, we fear him like a roach fears a can of raid. Where are you? Get over here. <laughs> Die. Just because it's a roach. That's why we kill him. We don't want a, <laughs> a fly. <laughs> why? We don't want to fly anywhere around us. Well, see, that's not God. So please, if you, there's any way you can do this, stop comparing God with human beings. God is not a man that he should lie. Let me add Pat's two cents uh, twist on the word. I'm not changing scripture. I am paraphrasing for today. God is not a man that he should flake out on you. God is not a man that he should jack you up and backstab you. God is not a man that gives you broken promises. All right, you get my point. Let, um, Rashad. Would you please read your scripture? This is Psalms 102. 13 to 20. Okay, great. 
Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yeah, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Hold that right there. Hold that right there. You're going to read on. Listen to this. He will regard the prayer of the destitute. Do you realize when you feel like you're at the bottom of the barrel? Your prayer is the one God's going to hear the most. Your, your prayer is going to grip his heart. I mean, the Bible refers to God jumping up off his throne, rising up because of the cry that comes to his heart and his ears. And he comes through darkness, through the thick clouds, thunder and lightnings. Why? He comes down, he draws you out of water, out of many waters, and pulls you out of all your troubles and sets you down in a large place. See, God is, he rescues us. So even when we're in the middle of our own mess that we made ourselves, he will rescue you if you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, repent and ask for help because some of what you're, what you're dealing with is something that only God can help. Some of the dysfunction that's in your life, only God can straighten that out. That's why he says in his word, I will go ahead of you and make the rough places, I mean, the, the crooked places straight and the rough places plain, meaning smooth. He's going to smooth out the rough edges. He's going to prepare the, 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 your path ahead of you. And he's going to clear out all the debris. But you have got to play a part in that. You've got to come to God, pour your heart out, pour your sins out, pour your, I mean, be real with God. Pour your weaknesses out, your failures, your, your con confusion, everything that boggles your mind and boggles your soul. you got to come to God for that. Only he can handle what you can't. Okay, Rashad, finish reading. Thank you. He's going to he will regard the prayer mm -hmm. of the destitute mm -hmm. and not despise their prayer. Mm -hmm. This shall be written for the generation to come and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven, did the Lord behold the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death. Now, thank you. To hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed unto death appointed to death. Listen, you guys. Some of you are in a prison right now. You're in a prison of hatred, of resentment, bitterness, pride, fear, hurt. The list goes on. And you have been there so long that you have learned to adapt. And you have inadvertently learned pain management, which means you are in a prison of pain. 